Okay, I accept the motion and we come out of executive session, reconvene a regular meeting, and then adjourn the regular meeting. So moved. Second. Motion by council, motion by Vice Mayor Pullman, second by Council Member Fear. Roll call vote on that motion, please. Moeller? Yes. Pullman? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Fear? Yes. Vaughn? Yes. Nab? Yes. Lauer? Yes. Motion adopted, 7-0. Okay, it's 6-0-1. Can we go directly into the next regular meeting? That's okay with everybody? If you don't mind, I'd like to go off this, the record for this special okay. meeting, then back on. I'll be just okay, that's fine. Real quick. Okay, good evening, everyone. Thanks for coming to Hamilton City Council this evening. Before we get started, I'd appreciate if you took a moment to silence or turn off your cell phones. Thank you. We're back on the record. And we're ready. Thank you. Okay, welcome to the regular meeting of Hamilton City Council. And um, it's January 24th. 2024, and uh, it's a little after six o'clock. We're here in City Council Chambers, 345 High Street in Hamilton. Roll call vote, please. Moeller? Yeah, uh, present. Pullman? Present. Ryan? Present. Fear? Present. Vaughn? Present. Nab? Present. Lauer? Present. We have a quorum. Okay, to start off, I'm offering a prayer by Councilmember Michael Ryan. So please stand. If you're able, they will be following up with the Pledge of Allegiance. Lord, please continue to guide our city, our city council, and our management teams. Please continue to protect our police officers and firefighters and keep them out of harm's way. Please continue to bless our city, our state, and our beautiful country, the United States of America. Amen. 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 Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. We have got three special presentations. And the first one is a Tom Vanderhorst proclamation. You're on, man. Hey, why don't we all go down there and join Tom? Is that okay? Would you like to come No, that's right. You sure you want to do this? I'm sure you'll never Not yet. I'm just going to keep my voice up on this. In the mic, please. In the mic, please. Okay. <laughs> Office of the Mayor Proclamation, whereas Hamilton City Council and City Administration would like to give recognition and show appreciation to Tom Vanderhorst for his work and dedication to serving the people of Hamilton, Ohio. And whereas Tom came to the City of Hamilton in 2014 when he was hired as a City's Finance Director. In that role, Tom made wide-ranging organizational and strategic improvements that greatly improved the organization. And whereas due to Tom's exemplary work, he was promoted to Executive Director of External Services, where he had oversight over many city departments, including the Building Department, Economic Development Department, Health Department, Planning Department, and Residence Services Department. And whereas Tom was instrumental in creating the financial models for catalytic development projects in Hamilton, including Spooky Nook, Well House Hilton, Markham Apartments, Rossville Flats, and many more. And whereas attributes that made Tom an effective leader were his extensive knowledge of municipal finance, his ability to build trusting relationships with a wide variety of people, and his find a solution attitude. And whereas Tom mentored many people within the city administration, always providing advice, and as well as seeing the talent and people that is sometimes overlooked. And whereas Tom was a valuable member of the city's planning commission, providing insight on city development issues. Whereas Tom has been involved with the Hamilton Parks Conservancy since its inception, he has been a steadfast advocate of the Hamilton Parks Conservancy and has been instrumental in its progress. And whereas on behalf of the Hamilton citizens who know Tom and citizens who do not know Tom, we thank him for improving Hamilton during his tenure. Now, therefore, I, Pat Muller, Mayor of the City of Hamilton, Ohio, members of Hamilton City Council, 
to hereby recognize Tom Vanderhorst for his service to the city of Hamilton, congratulate him on his retirement, and wish him the best in his future endeavors. Some of myself as mayor, acknowledged by Eric Pullman, vice mayor, Carla J. Fear, council member, Susan Vaughn, council member, Michael Ryan, council member, Timothy Nabb, council member, and Joel Lauer as council member. So, thank you, but we want to hear from you. Though. Well, I didn't realize I did all that stuff. <laughs> well, we saw it, and the citizens saw it, and the citizens and we truly, truly appreciate it. Thank you for caring about Hamilton, Ohio. Yeah, I, like I tell you, that makes my day. Um, kind of having a bad day this morning. Uh, you know, my my wife and I were kind of arguing. I think I had a little PTSD because I was thinking about what to wear tonight. I think it was remnants from my first and second interviews with Joshua. Um, and my wife and I were talking about it, and, and, and she uh, made a mistake, and I tried to call her out on it. And I said, hey, you've got to learn to embrace your mistakes. She, uh, she gave me a hug. Um, not exactly <laughs> sure what that was all about. <laughs> but uh, made her feel better. Made her feel better, and she was smiling. But I think the reason I was having so much stress, I don't, I don't know if all of you know this, but uh, my first interview here, Joshua, I'm calling you out on this. He uh, looks at me and says, and you said something, he says, why are you wearing that tie? That tie's ugly. And I was like, well, I didn't get that job. So the next interview, I'm like, I gotta be prepared. So I put a bunch of ties in my, my duffel bag, and he says, Why'd you wear that tie? And I said, well, which one do you like? And I pulled about 15 out of them out of, out of there and they just kind of busted out. But um, appreciate the kind words. Uh, this has been a fun ride. Um, my staff was nice enough to stick around tonight and I'd like to recognize them if you would stand. I see Cindy Hogg back in the corner, Ken Rivera, Jody, and Liz. You know, there's uh, some relationships that, that I'll never forget here. And Jody, especially you, I mean, I'll remember you forever because I've got that dog of yours. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's a gift that keeps giving. My insurance agent is still mad at me about taking that dog. But it's been a good time, Jody and I, last night, we went out to, to dinner with uh, Sam, or I'm sorry, Mike at Spooky Nook, and we were reminiscing about the thousand deaths that Spooky Nook died. And Mike is like, man, I really miss that seventh floor meeting. It's those meetings where, you know, we hammered it out and that deal died a thousand deaths. I really miss those. And I looked at it and said, you know, Mike, what I really miss is watching you kick the hell out of the bathroom door in there when you got mad when something didn't go your way. But it, what, what it reminded me is those, those relationships are so special. Those are so special, you know, like and I think that's one of the things that I'll probably always be remembered for uh, with Spooky Nook because how long we worked on that deal. But those relationships are so special and there's some relationships in here that I, I will never forget. Now, I think Joshua, you should have at least some rebuttal on this or something. <laughs> so Joshua, what do you want to say? <clears throat> Well, Tom is right. Um, he wore the most monstrous looking tie to the first interview, but he was smiling so big. It was, uh, I, I don't know. I, I think it was, uh, we had maybe three different candidates we were interviewing in a, in a one week span. And it's like, I intuitively knew the minute that Tom came in and sat down within a minute that he was going to be the candidate. And the proclamation you read said a lot of things. I promise you the proclamation you read did not cover everything. His work on Spooky Nook, on the Hamilton Parks Conservancy. I mean, Tom was with Kathy Klink, Steve Timmer and I, when we first drove to Pittsburgh. I still remember holding hands with Steve in Pittsburgh. Well, actually, I think it was on the way home in West Virginia when you walked into Panera Bread. But um, <laughs> it, it's just, you I can't. He's watching. <laughs> I'm sure he is. But uh, you, can't, you can't put into words what Tom has brought in, in a very, you know, in a decade probably since he's been here. But I mean, he has done 30 years of work in a decade, and his fingerprints are literally on every instrumental project that we have touched. And thank you. Anybody on council want to say anything at this point in time? Please. We 
we all know what you've done here in the city, but I think the biggest thing that stood out to me is when I got on the LinkedIn page and all the people, the number, hundreds of people outside of the city wishing you well, commenting on the things you've done. So you're, you have gone way beyond the city of Hamilton with how you've impacted this community and I just want to thank you for that. Anybody else? Tom, thank you for setting the table, as you've done so well over the years. And the influence that you've had with team members that you introduced tonight to, to everyone here, uh, but to the Hamilton viewers, and, and for the opportunities that you've brought together, the, the midnight oils that you've burned, the weekends that you've uh, come in and, and, and done work, volunteering work, you and your family, uh, to be able to be part of the fabric of Hamilton. The fabric of Hamilton will never be the same uh, and, and as Joshua shared, uh, what you've delivered in, in those, those, all of the projects, what you've delivered in friendships and relationships, uh, those will always be part, as you said, you'll never forget Jody because of the dog. We'll never forget you for all the contributions. Thank you. Okay, anybody else? Anybody else? So before you get this, I've heard you're a uh, legendary master of delivering dad jokes. Yeah. Is that true? Mm -hmm. Dad joke? If you can't, if you can't, then maybe you're not the legend that we thought you were. Well, but somebody told me that I'm you... just trying to think what genre I should pull from. Uh, genre. I mean, you know, um, dad joke is only a dad joke when it becomes a parent. <laughs> and there must be more after that. And if you uh, see two skeletons getting ready to get in a fight, don't worry, they won't fight. They don't have the guts. <laughs> Man, all I need is a, a, one of those drum things go like that. But I think you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, two bombs in here, bro. Yes, we do. <laughs> Applebee's, I think, in there. Oh, no. Red Lobster. <laughs> no, Red Lobster. <laughs> Same Red Lobster. Don't get more. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Josh was still trying to spot him off. <laughs> So round of applause, please. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, man. There you go. Wow. I thought you came around the other way. Okay, Mike Zelkin, you're up next for an 80 acres update. Do you know any dad jokes as well? Uh, not today. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that this was gonna be this kind of a session. I actually came with uh, prepared remarks. Uh, tough to follow, uh, tough to follow that. Congratulations, Tom. <laughs> That's a good dad joke. <laughs> we, can, we can definitely do that. Um, well, first of all, thank you for having me up here. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Joshua. Thank you, city council members. Um, first of all, on behalf of 80 Acres and our 300 associates, I really want to thank the city of Hamilton for the past five years of support and for being great partners. We love this city, and we're proud to call it home. Um, I could go off and, in the spirit of previous presentation, tell how we got here, but I will spare you all from that commentary. As many of you know, vertical farming industry has been going through some challenging times over the last year, year and a half, as much of technology industry has. However, um, our company continues to grow, and grow quite a bit thanks in no small part to our unique relationship with this city. As the only major vertical farming company between the coasts, we've proven not only that world-changing innovation can come from a small Midwest town, but that there are real strategic advantages in being located here. Now when business leaders from across the world um, think of high-tech agriculture, they think of Hamilton, Ohio. 
and many um, have come here to visit our farms and stayed here and ate in the restaurants. And um, it's, it's quite remarkable um, how we've been able to um, be so fortunate to bring so many amazing leaders uh, from around the globe here. And we're just beginning. We've scaled dramatically as a company since we moved to this city in 2019 from literally a handful of local stores to thousands of stores and um, restaurant outlets from across the eastern U.S. To meet demand, we need to keep growing. We need to keep <clears throat> investing in new technology and new jobs. Uh, the opportunities ahead of us are truly enormous. Um, even in bad markets, the opportunities are tremendous. We really believe that great companies are built in difficult times. Anybody can do great things when things are going well, but how a company, a team, a city, how everybody responds in times like this, that's what builds, we believe, lasting success. As we consider how to allocate our resources in the coming year and beyond, um, I want to make sure, please know that energy incentives do make a meaningful difference to us as a company. We believe in Hamilton. We're very grateful that Hamilton believes in us. And I promise you, with Tisha here, as we both represent the company, that we will work very hard to continue to earn your support. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> engineering projects update by the Director of Engineering, Rich Engel. Good evening, Mayor, Council, citizens of Hamilton. First and foremost, congratulations, Tom. Wish you all the best on your future endeavors. <laughs> oh, you can do. On to the presentation. <laughs> Traffic signal system project update. We are down to two gaps in our fiber system, and we need those two gaps completed in order for us to uh, finish it, finishing it up and make sure all of the signals are connected. And those are two aerial crossings, one over a CSX railroad and one over a Norfolk Southern Railroad. We have the permit for CSX, and we're just about, um, we submitted the fee to Norfolk Southern, so we should be getting those completed fairly soon. Um, we were not willing and um, capable of activating the EMS pre preemption system until the fiber is complete. We did not want to rely on cellular communication on an important aspect like EMS preemption. So we are waiting until that is the fiber is complete before we activate that. But that will be coming fairly soon. The 2023-2024 uh, concrete repair and resurfacing project, the contract Contractor has completed the concrete curb, sidewalk, and drive approaches in the Cardom Hills subdivision and on New London Road. They're currently working on installing new catch basins on uh, Bender Avenue, and then we'll be working on the concrete work on the rest of the project as well. We've had a slight delay, obviously, with the severe cold weather, and now with the rain, they've not been working the last few weeks, but they will be uh, starting up fairly soon. The Fairway Hills subdivision water main and resurfacing project, the water mains are complete. We have two final connections to make, but in the meantime, the contractor is working on the new water services, so they're working on the individual water services to the homes in the area. And then probably by mid, or early to mid-February, they'll be starting on the concrete work, sidewalk and drive approaches. Remember that this project is all one complete project. We're doing water main replacement first, then we're doing the concrete work, and then the pavement milling and resurfacing will be scheduled after that um, other work is completed.
new project on the list that's starting fairly soon is the Millville Avenue water main and resurfacing project. Uh, this is water main uh, replacement in preparation of the uh, future milling and resurfacing that's scheduled for next year. Uh, the water main construction, we met with the contractor, had the pre-construction meeting. They plan on beginning sometime in spring or summer. It will take them about five months to make that uh, make all that work complete. There will be occasional complete closures of Millville Avenue, and we will work with Department of Neighborhoods to get that information out and issue our normal news releases. We'll keep council informed as well, so you're aware of what's going on on that. Um, in addition, probably in February, we're going to be advertising another project, which will be the concrete curb sidewalk and drive approaches, again, in preparation for the ODOT uh, paving that will occur next year. Now, with the pavement milling and resurfacing, that is an urban paving grant program through ODOT, but we will manage the construction. We have more confidence in our staff to make sure it's done properly and correctly than we do in ODOT's inspectors. We've had poor experience in the past with their inspectors, so we do it ourselves now, and that'll be fiscal year 2025 for that project. Bilstein Bridge Rehabilitation Project. Project has been awarded to Sunesis Construction. We've worked with them on past projects. If you recall, they did the uh, main Millville Eaton intersection project. They also did the main Serial Haldeman project. The contract amount is a little over $2 million. Unfortunately, that was a lot much higher than our uh, engineer's estimate. We were very fortunate that ODOT's willing to increase the grant amount over $650,000 to $2 million, which is the cap for these bridge rehabilitation projects. So our share will be increased somewhat, but not as substantially as it could have been. We will be closing Billstein Boulevard at the bridge from both directions, Fairfield side and the city of Hamilton side. And that construction will start sometime in the spring of this year and continue through December. Townsville Road reconstruction project. It's been awarded to a company called Rack and Blower. The contract amounts a little over $4 million. This project will be phased to allow complete closure of Townsville Road while they reconstruct the road and provide a uh, <coughs> small widening of the road. We will be coordinating with businesses, <coughs> excuse me, and residents for accessibility. They plan on, we actually had the pre-construction meeting this afternoon. They be, plan on beginning March 1st, and they are going to be working from Hamilton Enterprise Park East, Easterly to uh, Gateway. The first segment they're going to work on will have a complete closure of Hamilton Enterprise Park through to just west of Gilmore Road, so about halfway on the project. <clears throat> Train Depot restoration, the contractor, LRT, has been working on it. They've completed the chimney on the single-story building. They've been doing uh, individual brick replacement on the buildings as well. And they're currently actively rebuilding the gable on the two-story building, which needs to be completed before we can do any roof replacement on that. Are there any questions? Mr. Mayor. Yes, Dr. Uh, Ryan. Uh, Rich, what? Going back to Millville Avenue, I, maybe I, I didn't catch this. What section it, are we doing the whole stretch of Millville Avenue, the water main, and plus for the resurfacing? for the water main? No, not the whole section. Um, I don't have it exactly in my mind exactly where the start and stop points are. I can provide that for you, but it's essentially from uh, Wasserman East okay. to probably Ohio Avenue or somewhere in that vicinity. Okay. But for the resurfacing, mm -hmm. it will be going from the railroad tracks to the corporation limit. Okay. So, so the closure, sorry. So the closures will be for the water main, not the resurfacing mainly, right? I had some, I had uh, the drive through reach out to me <coughs> yesterday, concerned that it's going to kill his business. Yeah, and the closure will be block by block. We will not have a complete closure from one end to the other for the project. It's from Washington to top of the hill. 
Heitzman Hill, whatever, you have businesses all the way up there. So. And the water main's not going in that direction, and we will not be closing that portion. Okay. Thank you. But I'll get you more details on the exact closure location. Thank Perfect. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Please. Rich, does that include curbs and sidewalks on Millville? Yes, it does. That oh. project will be bid in February. Okay. And um, we'll continue in, in uh, coordination with the water main project. We'll have two contractors working out there, <laughs> but we'll make sure that they don't overlap and uh, cause too much congestion and uh, traffic issues as well. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Vice Mayor Pullman, please go ahead. Uh, actually, two more questions. On Mill, are, are they going to do uh, sidewalks on both sides now? Is that the plan? Because there's only sidewalks on one side on most of No, we are not. Okay, you're just going to have the sidewalks the way they are right now? Yes. Okay, and the second question um, I had, the train depot roofing, are we still shooting for the April date? Yes. Okay, they're pretty much on schedule? Yes. Is the weather had well, except for today. Well, they, yeah. Yeah, but it's. Uh, they, they didn't work much last week either due to the severe cold. Got it, which I, it's understandable, but okay. I just wonder if they're on target. Yeah, I'll confirm that as well. Perfect. Thanks. Well, thank you, Rich, for and the entire city team for the grants <clears throat> that you folks get for this city. It's amazing how you do it, the amount that you get, and hopefully our citizens who are listening and, and those who hear about how we do well with other people's money it's well it's, it's actually our money right for so we're just dollars. getting it from the state but we, we, get, we get more than we pay but in. that's a good better thing us than somebody else right you're exactly right you could you could go on a circuit of seminars but if you do you'll be hurting us so if you but no thanks thanks everybody here in this room who uh gets grants for us because that's huge huge to get things done yep thank you thank you that takes care of special presentations. We now go to audience of citizens. And um, individuals who wish to make comments may speak during this part of the agenda or may reserve, reserve the right to speak prior to when the item is voted on throughout the agenda. Uh, everybody is required to sign this public speaking book here. Each speaker is allowed up to five minutes. Um, I have someone from Dallas, Texas named Sam. Got Sam, Andy, and uh, Sam's from Dallas, Texas. I don't know what project here. They're here for the senior housing project. Oh, okay. Questions are if you want to have them speak and come for after any presentation. Yeah, I think that would be great to do it that way. So you'll speak first, and then they can speak second. And uh, if we have any kind of questions, we'll have both the city person and the developer. Bob Harris. Is Bob here? Good evening and <laughs> happy new year to everybody. Did you introduce yourself, Bob, for those of oh, who don't know you? Sure. I'm Bob Harris. I'm from Hamilton, Ohio, and I like it that way. <laughs> so this evening, uh, I'm glad that I was sitting out in the quarter out there. Because one of my favorite subjects is street paving. And Rich, you just lit up my light. Um, one thing I need to know, uh, I want to know, I hear about the west side, I hear about the east side, I want to know about the second ward and East Avenue. I didn't hear those names on the list to get our streets paved this year. Um, been working on this for a long time. We went out, we graded all the streets, you know, from one to 10 and um, decided which streets needed immediate attention. We had 1.2 million that was earmarked for Front Street. There's a grant, so now we can use that money for some other street, you know, in the second ward. Um, or we can use 
the money that we have for the fourth ward for East Avenue. I want to get some movement. If we're going to raise the city, um, we want to raise all parts of the city as soon as we can. We want to make Hamilton all that we can make it, and I'm serious about that. And I said this before, if Fairfield uh, streets are better than ours, our goal is to make our streets the best. And so um, to council, this is one of the reasons that I feel that we got seven council people and it ought to be divvied up with the 17 neighborhoods and each neighborhood ought to have someone that they can go to that will fight for their neighborhood. I believe in that. I think that's fair. And I think that we need to raise our entire city. There should not be a blighted area in our city. That should be our goal, to be the best. And if that's not our goal, then I think we ought to replace all the council. Um, <laughs> I'm going to start with some, uh, some people I like. But uh, on a serious note, I, I would like to get some movement on the paving. And I don't want it four years down the road. I want to get it as soon as we possibly can. I'm proud of Hamilton. And when something goes on up in Hamilton, I get a call from Cincinnati. So I want uh, that call to be that, hey, I see that y'all getting some streets paved in your neighborhood. So on a serious note, uh, I, I need a, a date and a time that we're going to start you know, paving the streets um, in 2nd uh, and 4th Ward. And uh, beyond that, there was a uh, wreck in Bailey Square where the individual tore up the coping and knocked down the flag. Um, I'd like to see some movement on that. There, were, um, there was a gentleman that was setting fires in the trash cans. We haven't had any fires for a few months, so now I'd like to get our decorative trash cans back. Now, the only way I know how to do that is to come to council and have a word or two with council. Um, I don't march on council. I'm not saying that mm -mm -mm. I just want to see um, our goals and objectives, you know, met. So with that, um, I don't know that there's any questions for me, but um, let's do it. Bob, I, I'll tell you this. I don't think I've been on a council that's been any more active when it comes to fighting blight and being pro-positive appearance. And I believe we're all approachable. Uh, anybody from any neighborhood could come talk to us. And we've had quite a few town hall meetings recently, and it's good to communicate with our, our citizens, our constituents, and we are listening, and we are getting things done. I think Joshua looked into the situation involving the uh, damage to the square. Is that correct? I did. Um, and Bob, I was just looking at my, my emails. I did send you an email after <coughs> I attended my last SECA meeting um, and said that the repairs are scheduled for sometime in March or April. Joshua, I didn't get that email. You sure you sent it to me? Mm, they're I'll on the email list. I'll check um, on it, Joshua. <laughs> I was just messing with you. But, um, <laughs> would you like a cupcake? But, um, I, sent I, you on, I sent it to you on January 9th. You waited. I, I got you good. Um, oh, but yes, one, you one last thing with you, Joshua. Um, we had talked about a, um, a boxing match at Spooky Nukes. Is that going to happen? That also occurred on January 9th. You just were there to see it. <laughs> well, uh, Joshua, again, I think it would be a, a big money maker for the city. I think we'd have ample money if that fight took place. With that, uh, I want to thank you, man. Uh, but I appreciate you. I appreciate the job that everybody's doing. Um, Pat, you said that you know, that we can come talk to you? Yes. We need our council to come talk to all our neighborhoods. I don't mind talking Good to you. I don't mind coming to you, but I'm just saying people like to see the they people would. that are representing them come talk to them. Maybe we can have all of us have a certain few blocks, and we walk with you and some of the other leaders. Good idea. I like it, Okay. Uh, but one other thing. I think one of the best meetings we had, Joshua, was when you came to the square and we set up a table and we talked to everybody. Um, I, I know that you leave in your post, but um, I still like you as an entertainer, so come on down. Okay. 
Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Have a good evening. You too. <laughs> Oh, you got okay, we now go to the consent agenda. I'm Jody. But, you know. mm -hmm. We go to the consent agenda, and that includes all staff reports, all caucus reports, and meeting minutes. We're going to go to the committee of the whole, so council can ask questions, uh, be told more about the, some of the projects that are going on. We can also come in on reports. Is your motion that the regular meeting be recessed, and the committee of the whole take place. So moved. Second. Motion by Council Member Fear. Second by Council Member Vaughn. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Post same sign. Hearing none, that motion is carried at 637. You're going to direct us in this, Mr. City Clerk? Absolutely. Our first presentation will be done by our planning director, Ms. Liz Hayden. Good evening, City Council and residents of Hamilton. Thank you. We have one project coming from Planning Commission to you tonight, but it's a bigger project than typical, so I do have a couple more slides than normal, so I just want to give you a heads up. It's a proposal on 7551 Gateway Avenue. It's two different things, um, rezoning from R4 multifamily residential to residential plan development. Um, but that is partly the reason for that rezoning is that there is um, a development group, Dominium, proposing a development here, um, and they're submitting a preliminary plan development plan to allow a senior living apartment. It's a four-story building with um, 244 dwelling units proposed with five variances. So this is the site and the proposal, or the pros area, that's Gateway. Um, out just a little bit further east is Bypass 4, and then south is Tylersville, just to orient you to what, where this is proposed. The, this site that they're looking at is 13.2 acres. It's actually two parcels, um, and, that, and that's why one of, them is one of them is zoned R4 and one of them is zoned RPD already, so that's why one of them's being rezoned. And I'll talk a little bit more about the um, the two different parcels in a minute. But the project overall, a couple things to highlight. It's a senior apartment project, so meaning that 50, you have to be 55 years and older um, and earning 60% or less of the area median income. And amenities at the apartments include stainless steel appliances, granite countertops, in-unit washer and dryer, covered patio or balcony for all of the units. And there are site amenities that include, this isn't all of them, but um, a clubhouse, fitness center, outdoor dining, library, um, courtyard, trails, community commit kitchen, and public art sculpture garden. The proposed building is 50% brick on all facades, and they are proposing uh, EV charging stations for 5% of the proposed parking. And the project as proposed meets the residential plan development point system for amenities and design. They are asking for five variances. The first is they're proposing a four-story building where a three-story building is permitted. The next one is that they are proposing, the number of units they are pro uh, proposing is a higher density than not only what the zoning code allows, so they're proposing uh, 244 dwelling units, um, eight, which is 18 dwelling units per acre, um, where the zoning only allows 147 dwelling units. And the surrounding density is um, along Gateway is other um, multifamily apartments, but the density in the surrounding developments is nine to 12 dwelling units an acre, so it is um, denser than what is around there currently. They are proposing 298 parking spaces um, where 363 parking spaces are required. Uh, they decided, you know, the fact that it's a senior living facility that most of their um, tenants do not have two cars. They're also not proposing any covered or gar garage parking. Um, all of it is uh, surface parking, and we require 50% of parking spaces to be covered. I'm sorry, I must have sent the wrong. Um, 
proposal um, presentation tonight. So I'm just gonna go um, off my notes here. Um, so public input. Dominium has been working with the HOA of Woods of Sycamore Creek for a year. The, um, because, and that goes back to what I said I would highlight, um, is that it's two different parcels, two different property owners, one, one that's facing Gateway, but then there's also a larger parcel that they're in talks to, of acquiring from the HOA um, and of the Woods of Sycamore Creek, which is a single family development that is accessed off Tylersville. And that property is HOA owned and has a um, playground on it and also like walking trails and just green space. And part of the project is that they're all, um, going to buy another parcel that's adjacent to the prop develop the Woods of Sycamore Creek that is undeveloped. And they're going to move everything, all of those amenities to that site. And so all of the property owners in Woods of Sycamore Creek are well aware of this project and are supportive and are, you know, have approved um, selling this land and moving all that. One of their goals has been we've dealt with this other property in the past um, and they, they, their preference is for that not to be developed because uh, of traffic concerns in their community. So this achieves one of their goals because it would be park space instead of like new housing. Because of that engagement that they've had for the past year, there, uh, in my opinion, the, but there was no citizen opposition at Planning Commission or concerns um, at, about the project. I did want to note somewhat of a unique condition. Oh, well, it is a unique condition of approval. It's something that we have not dealt with before, but other communities, uh, notably Westchester, have utilized, uh, worked with the fire department, and they st stated that they believe that this, uh, si th this use and size of um, development would be a heavy user of EMS services based on similar projects around the community. And so there, there's, a recommend, there's a condition of approval uh, that's included in the project that is, um, and I can pull that up, that's in this one. Um, it's number 29 on the presentation. Dominium agrees to reimburse the city of Hamilton for any non-reimbursed EMS medical tram transports to and from the proposed facility that exceeds 18 non-reimbursed transports annually starting from January 1st each year. Proof of failure to be reimbursed for services will be submitted to Dominium or the property owner with invoice. Dominion or the property owner will pay the city of Hamilton within 30 days from receiving the invoice. The invoice amount will be reasonable and comparable to other cities and townships for the same or similar services. So that's the first time that since I've been in the planning department we've discussed um, this, but it's, uh, like I said, Westchester has uh, been using it. There were, there's, that conversation is still ongoing with Dominion on the um, details of that condition. And there's also other things out, um, ongoing conversations, for example, stormwater management. So it's, a want to note that this is a project that you will see multiple times. This is because it's a rezoning and a planned development. It is not like the conditional use process where this is the last time you see it. It's going to be back for public hearing, first reading and second reading. And then they will come back to planning commission with a final plan development, with ha which will have greater detail. So this is this is an ongoing process, um, and it's the first step. So, do you have any questions for me? Any questions at this time, yeah. Liz? Um, to the fifty-five plus restriction, can you explain a little bit on how that is restricted? Is that through the financing, is that just an arbitrary something they're putting on there? I just want to understand because at 1.22 uh, parking spaces per unit, if that restriction was ever lifted, I think that would be very problematic for parking that site. Yes, I, my understanding is that it's finance, but since they're here, I feel like they would be, be the best to answer that if that's okay, um, if I have them come up. If that's okay with the mayor? Yeah, it's plenty fine, yeah.
uh, Sam Lurchy with Dominium, uh, Dallas, Texas. I prepared a little speech, talking point. I can go through that first, or we can just talk about the financing. Just incorporate what he's asked into your presentation, if you would. Sure. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, Dominium's proud to be a national leader in providing income and restricted housing for seniors and working families. Um, so age restriction is a part of our uh, land use restrictive agreements with our financing. So that's how that works. Um, I'm excited to be here with you this evening to progress what we're hopeful will be a successful and significant effort to provide affordable homes for hundreds of area seniors and contribute to the local economy. Uh, as part of our effort, we've had uh, an excellent working uh, relationship with city staff and thank them for their collaboration thus far. Um, thank you for your time and consideration. Any questions? Otherwise, I can respond to. Actually, uh, just to go back to, the, to yeah. the question, when you said it's, so is it like bonds that are issued that require, but once those bonds are paid, does that 55 plus restriction burn off? Yeah, but that's a 30 year extended use period. And we would, we would plan on resyndicating that. So it's a, it's a 30 year land use restriction with the bonds. Okay. Bonds and tax credits, yep. Thank you. Mm -hmm. There's no way that those bonds could be paid off and then that would go away as far as the age. <clears throat> um, I guess what he, I think what he's asking is, is there a call period for idea. those bonds that they right. say could they be paid off at year 10 or 15? No, not within the extended use period, the 30 year period, no. Okay. Please. What size would the apartments average um, square footage? One bed would be about somewhere in the 900 feet or 900 square feet. I don't have the plans in front of me. Maybe I'll just, might be better to come back and actually have the numbers right in front of me. It was a part of the presentation, but um, generally about 900 square feet for one beds, um, 1,100 or so for twos, and uh, 1,200 or so for the three beds. But we'll, Get those Go numbers ahead. out of the fit plan. Yes, yeah. Another question for Liz. If you don't mind. The Westchester, you said, does the thing about the EMS and bills them for 18 of them, you said, for the year? Uh, Anything over the fir first 18. <clears throat> Anything over the first 18, okay, that clarify that. And um, if they bill a developer that and the developer doesn't pay, what's the outcome on that? You know, we are gonna have, I think, another a more detailed conversation with Westchester in the next week, but my assumption is it would go to collections. Okay, I'm just. Yeah, no, I'll find that answer out for you. Thank you. Mr. <clears throat> Mayor. Please. If I could ask yes. uh, the gentleman, what is the rent on average? A one bedroom, <clears throat> what would that be? The one bedroom, I, I can pull it up, but it was about, 1300 per per unit for a one bed. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mayor, Councilman on the proposal, can you tell us <clears throat> potentially in, in a four story building, ones, twos, and threes? You had mentioned the potential apartment size. Yeah, we're planning 110 <laughs> ones, 110 twos, and then I believe 24 uh, three beds. Okay. And you still feel that the parking would suffice? We understand you're requesting not to have any garage or any, if you will, carport space, mm -hmm. uh, but that the one car per unit would seem to suffice? Yeah, so we have about 40,000 units uh, nationwide. So this is, you know, our senior product. This is something that we've seen, um, you know, across the country, w w plenty of um, uh, examples that we have. Uh, we typically see less than 1.2. This is a ratio of 1.22 for seniors. We we definitely see a ratio less than 1.2, closer to 1.15 or below. Um, something that's built into the, uh, the considerations was that proof of parking, uh, deferred parking for up to the required 1.5. So that was something that we discussed at Planning Commission that if the city believes that down the line that's something that is needed, we could certainly build those additional spaces. Good, thank you. Mm -hmm. Question. Uh so you develop, you own, and you manage. Yes, sir. Yep. And that's been the history of, of, of your Absolutely. group. Yep, for over 50 years. That's, yep. How long have you folks been uh, doing this type of work? Uh, this is a over 50-year-old company. We've been <clears throat> doing uh, new construction ourselves for the past 20 years. 20 years, yeah. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Yeah. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next up for agenda item number two will be a presentation by our Director of Economic Development, Mr. Jody Gunderson. Mayor, City Council, uh, my name is Jody Gunderson, Director of Economic Development. Um, what you have before you tonight is a recommendation relative to authorizing and directing the city manager to execute a development agreement relative to the actions at uh, located at uh, 903 Bell Avenue. Um, Bell Avenue is is uh, where Durana Hybrid is is located. Durana Hybrid is a MBE, which is a min minority business. Uh, enterprise. Uh, they're a Native American company. Um, they've been now in the city for a, a number of years, um, but I thought I would give you an idea of what they do for, um, what their processes are. They've, uh, they work for fulfillment centers. They do the design, the manufacturing, and the installation of a lot of these um, big company if they do it in the fulfillment centers as well as the bottling and conveyor systems in in bottling companies. Uh, this is just a brief uh, history of the company. Uh, they are founded in 1996 in New York, moved to Memphis in 2005. In 2016 is when uh, we were introduced to Durana Hybrid. They came up from Memphis. At that time, um, they were looking for a place to locate, um, and they were, for a period of time, operating out of our third floor here as they were beginning to ramp up their business. They eventually found a building over on uh, 903 Bell and began to renovate that building, and they've really done a, a fantastic job for people that have toured that building and been able to see what what it looks like now, it's, uh, it's really it almost looks like a clean industry um, type of company that's operating from there. Um, during that period of time too, they brought up their other divisions from uh, Memphis, uh, which is AMPS, which is their staffing company. And uh, it's to understand their business, they do a lot of work throughout North America and um, including um, Mexico and Canada, um, but the United States as well. Um, Staffing is important for them uh, because they're hiring a lot of people wherever the job is, uh, alongside the people that are working from their headquarters here. But over the last several years, they've been um, putting together their team here. Um, 2019, as they were able to locate everyone up from Memphis. And uh, in 2024, uh, we're to the point where they're looking at expansion, uh, expanding their, their existing, well, they're at their existing site, uh, adding to uh, their facility there 100,000 square feet that would uh, accommodate the, um, the expansion of their manufacturing through Desco. Desco is their, their wireware company that's, uh, uh, as I said, when they put together their fulfillment centers, they're doing a lot of the conveyors. They do do design. They do all of all aspects of that process so that it's like a turnkey when they leave. Um, some of the companies that they've worked for, FedEx, Amazon, some of the very, very large companies, I think they also worked and did some work for uh, 80 Acres uh, just recently as well. So. I see their trucks um, at uh, Spooky Nook every once in a while as well. Um, again, they're looking at building uh, where you see the red arrow there. That would be construction of new 100,000 square feet. That's how they aggregate the use of that structure with 65,000 of it being for warehouse and training, 25,000 for their DESCO, uh, which is the wiring aspect of their business and then 10,000 for offices for Durana Hybrid, AMP, and Desco. Um, they currently, uh, within uh, their uh, 
facility in Hamilton, they have 61 jobs that, that reside within their building in Hamilton with an annual payroll of $4 million. Their proposed expansion will include adding 55 new jobs and new payroll of 2.8 million as well as a capital investment of 15 to 20 million dollars. Um, the road work uh, estimate for that area um, is projected to be about 4,800,000. Um, of that project funding, uh, we're, um, we would be offering a 60% uh, CRA to the company for a period of 15 years. And we would have tax increment financing as well, drawing from that to pay for the uh, infrastructure, the road improvements in that area. With that, if you have any questions, I'd appreciate it. Any questions at all? I think it's just been a, a good relationship that the city has had with, with um, uh, on a hybrid. I mean, folks who live in Lindenwall could yes. walk to work. Well, and that's what I really think is great about this, too, is, is this is a business. When we talk about investing in the community and where our business is, we invest, we've, we can point to literally every area of the city that we've seen investment. And that's, that's something that council um, pledges to uh, the residents and so does city staff. Uh, this is a great example of a reuse of a, um, of a building and, and actually building uh, moving forward in a, with the technology that they have and the industry that they're in. They should be there for quite some time. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, for items three and four, I'll be covering those items. Uh, hello, Mayor, members of Council, members of the public. I'll provide a brief presentation about agenda items three and four. Uh, these are liquor permit applications. So before I get started with that, as another reminder for these applications, we have new permits and we also have transfer permits. Uh, the State of Ohio provides a legislative authority such as City Council the opportunity to object to these permits. Uh, this allows our city departments to do a review and provide those recommendations. For both of these permits, staff is recommending that we do not object to these permits, uh, just for starters. Uh, so for this first permit, this is for the uh, family dollar over on Pleasant Avenue, 4106 Pleasant Avenue. This permit deals with uh, like a takeout prepackaged alcohol sales, so like your takeout beer or prepackaged uh, wine or low proof uh, cocktails as well. Uh, that's a pretty basic application. Do we have any questions about this? No, okay. Uh, number four, this is uh, an application from uh, Jackalope Spirits LLC. Uh, this deals with uh, on-site consumption of uh, beer, wine, low proof, uh, uh, low proof cocktails as well. Also, uh, regular liquor, uh, liquor sales past 1 a.m. and 2.30 a.m., as, as well as on and off site consumption for beer and wine. Do we have any questions about this item? Let's try to picture where that is. Um, That's on, on yeah. the corner of uh, South Third and Court Street. So it's just adjacent to it's this uh, building. The wine the lounge. Is that 24? Yes. 24. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Got it. Mr. Mayor, please. can I back up to the previous one, the family dollar? I have a couple sure. of questions. One is, is this typical of family dollar stores to sell alcohol? Is this unusual? I would say this is something that I've seen recently. Uh, I mean, within my, within my tenure of being the clerk, um, I have noticed more applications from these kinds, from like um, their family dollar or dollar, I wouldn't say dollar general, but these kinds of stores, this is something new that I've been seeing. Okay, and then if I have the location correct, this is close to Linden Elementary. Uh, yeah, this is in Lindenwald. So that is right next to uh, Pleasant Treasures across the street, I believe would be the avenue. Is yeah. the proximity in question to an elementary? You said there's no objection to this permit. 
Correct. So our, our uh, fire department, health department, and building departments have reviewed this application, and uh, they don't have any objections to it. Just this. so city council is aware, the school superintendent called me, and they did, um, they are protesting the, the permit here. They got a letter from the state of Ohio, and they said they did not want it in proximity to Linden Elementary, which is just a little southeast of this location. I was going to say, how far is that away? It's just... It's, it's, real, it's pretty close. Is it there some kind of a, not so many feet away? Yeah, I thought that yeah, was a standard statute that mm -hmm. couldn't be within so many feet. Mm -hmm. uh, not that I'm aware of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, Mallory, do you mind coming up? Mallory in the, my office is, I mean, she's the one that deals least with the, this, this is the same issue that Tano had, correct? Because of the proximity to the church that he had to go through the same process. Yes, they'll send letters out to any churches or elementary schools or anything that's kind of in that radius, and it's on them to send petition back that they don't want it. So we we don't have any objection, but the school letter will be the objection to the liquor permit, and if any churches were there. But legally, it's okay. I mean, within if the, the schools and churches don't object, okay. So Mallory. <clears throat> Who recognizes the objection? I mean, do they just, is it, I just want to be on the record, we object, or can it actually keep it, keep us from approving it? Um, that's up to you. I mean, everything's going through the state of Ohio. So we have our letter, churches have their letter, schools have their letter. The state of Ohio is the one that's saying yay or nay. We're just getting our p part that's going to the building, health, and fire departments based on, I don't know if we can object without having a legitimate. Mr. Mayor, if, if I may, um, so the letters go to the separate entities um, in addition, like the police, our police department receives, you know, these kinds of letters and has a basis to object as well. Uh, and so we are limited in terms of the grounds that uh, we can object to based upon safety and health standards, et cetera. And so it would be on the school to raise that objection and, and not for us because uh, we are confined to certain um, grounds. If the school raises an objection and it's within a certain number of feet, is that an automatic they can't do it or is it anything automatic in this? I, I'm not sure about whether it's automatic oh. or not, but I know our, what our grounds are confined to. So we don't to need to take process. One, one time. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, it still has to go through the process. Through the right? state, correct. Okay. And so there could be an objection with Correct, and they, they have a hearing process for that, et cetera. Same as when we submit our objection, that doesn't end it. They will typically issue for there to be a hearing on the matter. Uh, the state will hear that uh, and then make a decision after that. Local point. hearing down here? It is usually local. Um, in the in past, it's been in Columbus for other hearings. So our recommendation we don't need to table this or anything until we see what's going to happen with that's, it. Okay. That's correct. All right, thank you. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Councilmember Lauer. Daniel, do other family dollars and dollar generals um, in the city of Hamilton have liquor uh, I've seen some recently. Uh, I could f follow up with council, provide a report on recent liquor permits that I've seen. Do you track this one and keep council aware? and? Law director, keep us aware of, of things that we receive, whether it's from a school, whether it's from Columbus or anything like that. I mean, I, I obviously council's <laughs> kind of concerned about this. Yes, we, mm -hmm. we can we can follow up and track it. Yes, we can do that. And if we have to do something within a certain, we have to do something within a certain time frame, kind of you know, keep us aware of the time frame that what we can there, do. There's no action that we need to take to make an objection at this time. Or at a later time, if we, you know, this is our opportunity right now to, to make an objection, it would be on the school to to take action. Mayor. That's number fear. Uh, yeah. Or, or even, you know, this could be the start of something where every dollar store decides they want to do it. So I, I would like to know to keep track of it because I don't want to start a precedent where everybody's getting a liquor license. So logistically. It, can we pull this one and then vote on it at the next meeting? Uh, something about our objection to this? I, I'm not sure what, what the time it was. Your, what's your deadline on that for our objection? 
a fire Daniel. protection. Uh, I'd have to look up and tell you. Okay. But we can we can always reach out to the state for requesting a extension for an additional thirty days. Okay. Yeah, we can we can we do that and then get additional information. We have to go ahead and do that. Mm -hmm. It's on the safe side because if it, you don't want that to be now approved before next time that we're in council meeting. I mean, I, I sense some kind of real concern here that we haven't really seen in too often many. So this is definitely striking a nerve right now. Basically something now, we can make a vote on it now. But if we can do it at the next meeting, great. But we need to know when we have to do something. That's what I don't know. Mr. Mayor. Yep. Vice Mayor. Um, I'm confused a little bit. If we voted on your recommendation right now and the state comes in, there's a petition come, or a petition comes out, then it could be still shut down. Would that still, it still could be shut down after that, right? So let me just back up. So the, the state issues letters to entities, the, the school board being one entity, mm -hmm. the city of Hamilton being another entity to ask about objections. And so what council is voting on now is to whether or not the city of Hamilton has any objections it's not to we're, we're not acting or speaking to raise the objection on behalf of the school board the school board has their own objection right. process uh, and so right now based upon the report before city council is is that staff has investigated this and there is no basis uh, to object to the application we can look into that but if there's no information for the city of Hamilton to object then we would not object and we would allow the school district's process to play out. Well, how do we join the school district possibly? I mean, I'm just trying to think of a way that we can be heard in this and if the, our basis could be the fact that our school. That, that's not one of the, the, the legal grounds, um, but we can report back information that we hear you know, from the school, but we are mm -hmm. confined under the statute to object on the basis of, of safety and health concerns. We also have had an objection in the past where we had uh, an applicant that was going to be, a, had a criminal background that we objected um, and we joined the police department in that objection, so we're confined with our objections. Um, but we can definitely table this and get additional information as to what the school's objections are uh, and then come back at the next um, council meeting to give more information um, before council votes on it, if that's the pleasure. Mr. Mayor, Council Mayor I believe it was asked and answered, but uh, Daniel, if you will, uh, please go back, because I remember we have voted to allow legislation on, uh, I'll call them the dollar store scenarios throughout the city. Uh, but this one does raise a question because of its proximity to both, both school and church that we may, we may not act on, we've heard. But in, in, importantly, Daniel, if you can go back and tell us, especially in this past year, if you go back to the beginning of uh, 2023 and tell us what this re recent legislation was that we might have approved for that scenario of stores, uh, that would be very, very helpful for council. Yeah, I can do that. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, I have one additional question or clarification. Please. Daniel. Lounge 24 is just applying for a new license. There's nothing changing name or anything. This is not Lounge 24. Oh, it is not. It is not. Okay. It's it's, it's uh, on the corner adjacent to like on the opposite corner of this building on the corner of uh, South Third and Court Street. Lounge 24 is on South Second and Court Street. Oh, okay. So what building? What is building there? is this then? It was the former Sharon Horse Furniture. Oh, okay. If you, if you recall recently, there has been activity on that property okay. to develop that into, if you will, uh, a, it, is it? a lounge. Okay. 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 Thank you. That helps me. Sorry. That's my fault. I thought it was lounge 24. I didn't do. So where are we with four then? That doesn't matter. I, I, I think we need to not, I don't, I don't want to slow down and miss a filing date of sorts. But I'd like to know if this could be tabled and we don't miss any kind of a filing date. If we could do something like that while well, we find out what the school board's going to be doing with specificity and go from there. I mean, no, is that an, an idea? Yeah, There's please, no obje I, I have no objection to that process, Mr. Mayor. The um, city clerk said he could um, request an extension. We can get additional information and report back at the next but, council meeting. So if that's the pleasure. So I can't pull the report up this quick to read it, but what staff 
when this is made, when this is reviewed to make a recommendation, hmm. do you take into consideration schools and that, whoever I'm looking at that makes the recommendation? Is it, is it, what group of people makes this recommendation? I, I guess my question is, do you already take that into consideration of schools and that? I, I think instead of slowing everything down. So, Letitia, I think the question that we're looking for is what discretion does city council have with something like this? I mean, obviously, they're saying from a public health and a public safety perspective, there are no objections. But if council has an objection, what what say do they have in this process? So we're we're confined um, by just objecting based upon what's in the Ohio Revised Code uh, and the most typical response that we object to is is health and safety concerns uh, so we inquire with the health department has there been violations uh, if the health um, the fire department has violations etc and there are some other provisions in the law like I said if an applicant has uh, had a particular type of criminal past that could be um, inconsistent with somebody having a liquor license we have the basis to object uh, but basically we have to substantiate that we have information to believe that there is a violation under the law and then raise that. Um, so, so to be very hyper clear with my question, if they agree with the school district, they don't think that someone should be selling alcohol that close to an elementary school, they don't have the ability to say no. You're saying that that rests solely with the school board um, and so they would have to fight that, not city council. Correct. Thank you. What if some neighborhoods got together and residents said, hey, we don't think this is a good idea for health, for safety, for, I mean, is that, Anything which the state looks at up in Columbus, if, if, if the citizens around it don't necessarily get a good feeling about health, safety, and absolutely. And what we would do is we would, but we would still usually make some deference to um, also our internal departments to be able to, to to support that as well. So I think it's fine to just go ahead and table it, get additional information, and come back if that's the will of council. It sounds like there's a pleasure to get more information and there's no harm in that. Okay, from a logistical standpoint, that'll take a motion to pull number three off of the caucus agenda. Is that correct? Yeah, after we come out of the committee of the whole, we could make a motion to pull agenda okay. item number three from the caucus agenda and as, as well as make a motion <coughs> to table it. And then we could re review this at the next meeting. And will there be discussion at that point Stop discussing it now if I have another question. Wait until it's tabled or? I, I think we could probably provide some more information with that update and hopefully okay. that can answer some questions. <clears throat> okay. I guess we've got one more before we close the committee of the whole. Uh, yes, this is a amendment to uh, section 939 of the codified ordinances. This will be presented by our uh, director of engineering, Mr. Rich Angle. Good evening, Mayor, Council, citizens of Hamilton. Come here tonight to ask you for your consideration on increasing the water tap and meter fees and the hydrant meter policy revision. It's important to note, I'm not gonna go through the numbers, but it's important to note that the ordinance on the books as it exists today was passed on May 14th, 2008. So here we are in 2024 and we still are charging customers the same fees so we had our uh, water distribution staff and engineering staff reviewed the material costs, labor costs, and equipment costs, and have established new fees that we are proposing to be uh, changed in the uh, ordinance. Uh, these uh, current fees are very outdated, and actually it's, we are supplementing the cost of the actual fees with the uh, rates with our water rates, so it's important that we get these updated to, uh, to what they belong. And also, with our um, hydrant meter policy revisions, we want to increase that fee as well. Again, that's a old um, ordinance that's outdated, and um, we also want to put more restrictions on those who abuse the use of hydrant meters or actually don't use hydrant meters, so we're imposing some additional large dollar penalties on those users. Do you have any questions? Questions about this one? Thank you. 
And that concludes our presentations. Okay. Your motion to committee the whole be closed? So moved. moved. Second. Motion made by Council Member Nab. Second by Council Member Vaughn. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Post same sign. Hearing none. Motion carried at 716. I set the motion at the regular meeting be reconvened. So moved. Second. Motion made by Vice Mayor Pullman. Seconded by Council Member Ryan. Roll call vote on that motion, please. Moeller? Yes. Pullman? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Fear? Yes. Vaughn? Yes. Nab? Yes. Lauer? Yes. Motion adopted, 7 0. Is there any kind of a motion before? Mr. Mayor. Vice Mayor Pullman. Make a motion that with the exception of the item so noted. Wait a minute. No, nope. sorry. sorry we motion before do. the motion was going to possibly be talking about table on this. All right. We're going to okay, yeah, then pull, I'll make pull. a motion to uh, pull um, number four from the caucus agenda for later discussion. I think it's, I think uh, it's, I think it's three. 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 Is it three? Sorry, yeah. three. You're right. Thank you for the correction. So make a motion to pull uh, item number three from Second. the caucus. Pull it and table it, is that correct? Table three? It, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's been a motion made by Vice Mayor Pullman, seconded by Council Member Fear. A roll call vote, I believe. Go ahead and do a roll call vote. Roll call vote. Moeller? Yes. Pullman? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Fear? Yes. Vaughn? Yes. Nab? Yes. Lauer? Yes. Mm -hmm. Motion adopted, 7 0. Okay. Now is uh, there another motion that we can do regarding the Reports, the other reports. Yeah, this was, this was with the exception of agenda exactly item. Exactly right. Or it says, with the exception of item so noted, please say item number three. <coughs> Mr. Mayor. Vice Mayor Pullman. Make a motion that with the exception of the item so, uh, the item number three, council receive the reports of the consent agenda and concur on their recommendations. Okay. Second. Motion by Vice Mayor Pullman. Second by Council Member Vaughn. Um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Post same sign. <clears throat> Hearing none, that motion is carried at 718. We're now going to council act to pertain to legislative items. And now it's separate motion. Mr. Mayor. Council Member Vaughn. I move that a note be made upon the minutes that each member of council was provided a printed copy of each item of legislation prior to its being considered at this meeting. Second. Second. Motion by Council Member Vaughn. Second by Council Member Fear. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Hearing none, the motion is carried at 719. We we'll now go to pending legislation, agenda item number six, second reading of an emergency ordinance involving the <coughs> job resident services coordinator. An emergency ordinance amending Schedule A of the city's classification and compensation plan as set forth in emergency ordinance number EOR 2023-12-106, adopted December 13th, 2023, as amended from time to time by amending the pay range of the resident services coordinator classification, second reading. Mr. Mayor. Council Member Vaughn. I move the ordinance be adopted. Second. Motion by Council Member Vaughn, seconded by Council Member Ryan. Any discussion on this one? Hearing none, roll call vote, please. Moeller. Yes. Pullman? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Fear? Yes. Vaughn? Yes. Nab? Yes. Lauer? Yes. Warrants adopted, 7-0. Now go to new legislation, agenda item number seven, two readings of an emergency ordinance involving a new classification, assistant police chief. An emergency ordinance amending and supplementing Schedule A of the city's classification and compensation plan as set forth in emergency ordinance number EOR 2023-12-106 adopted December 13, 2023 as amended from time to time to establish the new classification of assistant police chief first of two readings. Mr. Mayor. Vice Mayor Pullman. Make a motion that the rules be suspended and the said ordinance be read a second time by its title. Second. Motion by Vice Mayor Pullman, second by Council Member Ryan. Roll call vote on that uh, motion, please. Moeller? Yes. Pullman? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Fear? Yes. Vaughn? Yes. Nab? Yes. Lauer? Yes. Motion adopted, 7 0. Okay, second reading of the emergency ordinance, please. An emergency ordinance amending and supplementing Schedule A of the city's classification and compensation plan as set forth in emergency ordinance number EOR 2023-12-106, adopted December 13, 2023, as amended from time to time to establish the new classification of assistant police chief. A second reading. Mr. Mayor. Vice Mayor Pullman. Make a motion that the ordinance be adopted. Second. Motion by Vice Mayor Pullman, second by Council Member Ryan. Um, any discussion on this one? 
Roll call vote. Moeller? Yes. Pullman? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Fear? Yes. Vaughn? Yes. Nab? Yes. Lauer? Yes. Or it's adopted. 7 0. Now go to agenda item number eight. First reading of an emergency ordinance involving a memorandum of agreement with the union. An emergency ordinance amending and supplementing Schedule E of the city's classification and compensation plan as set forth in the negotiated agreement between the City of Hamilton and Ohio Council Aid of American Federation of Federal, State, County, and Municipal Employees, Local 475 AFL-CIO, executed April 19, 2022, to add the Public Works Sign Shop Maintenance Workers Classifications 1, 2, and 3, and authorizing the City Manager to execute a memorandum of agreement with said union first reading. Thank you. We go to agenda item number Nine, first reading of emergency ordinance involving a cell phone tower located at Potter's Golf Course. Uh, so, Mayor, prior to this meeting today, staff actually rec uh, requested that we do two readings for this ordinance tonight. So we would need a first reading and a motion to suspend the rules, followed by a second reading, if that's okay with council. And that's on agenda item number nine? That's uh, correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So, an emergency ordinance authorizing and directing the city manager to execute an option agreement with Propco Wireless LLC to sell a communications easement relative to the cell phone tower located at Potter's Park Golf Course, 417 New London Road, Hamilton, Ohio, first of two readings. Mr. Mayor. Councilman Burnett. I move the rules be suspended, said an ordinance be read a second time by its title. Second. second. Council Member Nab. Second by Council Member Vaughn. Roll call vote on that motion, please. Moeller? Yes. Pullman? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Fear? Yes. Vaughn? Yes. Nab? Yes. Lauer? Yes. Motion adopted, 7 0. The second reading of the emergency ordinance, please. An emergency ordinance authorizing and directing the city manager to execute an option agreement with Propco Wireless LLC to sell a communications easement relative to the cell phone tower located at Potter's Park Golf Course, 417 New London Road, Hamilton, Ohio, for uh, second reading. Mayor. Councilmember Nab. I move that the ordinance be adopted. Second. Motion by Councilmember Nab, second by Councilmember Vaughn. Any discussion about this one prior to the roll call vote? Hearing none, roll call vote, please. Moeller? Yes. Pullman? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Fear? Yes. Vaughn? Yes. Nab? Yes. Lauer? Yes. Or it's adopted, 7 0. Thank we go to agenda item number 10, which is a first reading emergency ordinance about involving a termination agreement with. Located at 514 Maple Avenue. An emergency ordinance authorizing and directing the city manager to execute a termination agreement and related actions with Great Miami Brewing Real Estate Holdings LLC related to certain real property at 514 Maple Avenue, Hamilton, Ohio, 45011. First reading. Thank you. We got go to agenda item number 11. Two readings of emergency ordinance involving an agreement between City of Hamilton and 80 Acres. An emergency ordinance authorizing the execution of a second amendment to the utility economic development agreement between the city of Hamilton and 80 Acres Investments LLC. First reading. Mr. Mayor. Councilmember Vaughn. Councilmember Fear, I'm sorry. I move that the rules be suspended and said ordinance be read a second time by its title. Second. second. Motion by Councilmember Fear. We spoke down here first. I think Susan got me on that. Susan got you on that one? Okay. <laughs> Motion by Council Member Fear, second by Council Member Vaughn. <clears throat> Roll call vote. Moeller. Yes. Pullman. Hmm. Yes. Ryan. Yes. Fear. Yes. Vaughn. Yes. Nab. Yes. Lauer. Yes. Motion adopted, 7 0. Second reading of the emergency ordinance, please. An emergency ordinance authorizing the execution, excuse me, of the second amendment to the utility economic development agreement between the city of Hamilton and 80 Acres Investments LLC, second reading. Mr. Mayor. House Member Fear. I move the ordinance be adopted. Second. Okay. Motion by Council Member Fear, seconded by Council Member Ryan. Yes, sir. Any discussion about this one at all? Just a very short comment. Um, I love when Mike talks because it, he has a, a very unique ability to connect and, and resonate with people. But um, 
But the fact that Mike and Tisha are sitting here today is, is truly a testament of where we have come as a community. There is no doubt in my mind that 80 acres could literally pick any city across the globe to locate and people would welcome them with open arms. Uh, the fact that, that Jody and Stacy and Economic Development established a very early relationship with them um, and here we are all those years later still sitting here and um, they still want to be a part of Hamilton. I'm, it's easily top three proudest things in my 24 year plus public administration career. So thanks to both of you for investing and believing in Hamilton, Ohio. Yes, thank you very, very much. Thank you. Any other discussion? Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor I Nam. too, Joshua, when you mentioned about Mike and Tisha, I remember your first visit to Hamilton and walking and looking and saying, what do we do? And here we are a, a few years later. But as Joshua shared and all of us shared, thank you for your commitment. We're really, really glad you're here. Proud to see your foods and stores around oh, yeah. here. I mean, that, that just makes all of us smile. And it's very, very good as well. It's very and good. You're great people to have in our city. So thank you so very much. Any other discussion or comments at this time? <clears throat> Roll call vote. Moeller? Yes. Pullman? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Fear? Yes. Vaughn? Yes. Nab? Yes. Lauer? Yes. Or it's adopted, 7 0. Okay, we now go to agenda item number 12. It's a resolution involving our 2024 2025 concrete repair and resurfacing program. A resolution ordering the resurfacing and repair of streets and concrete where necessary and appropriate on various streets and avenues in the city of Hamilton, Ohio, 2024 through 2025 concrete repair and resurfacing program assessment role. Mr. Mayor. Vice Mayor Pullman. Make a motion that the resolution be adopted. Second. Motion by Vice Mayor Pullman. Second bid by Council Member Ryan. Any discussion on this one? Hearing none, roll call. Moeller? Yes. Pullman? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Fear? Yes. Vaughn? Yes. Nab? Yes. Lauer? Yes. Resolution adopted, 7 0. Thank you. We go to agenda item number 13, which is a resolution involving the uh, resurfacing 128 ODOT. A resolution for final consent legislation with the Ohio Department of Transportation, ODOT, relative to allowing ODOT to resurface State Route 128 located within the City of Hamilton Corporation limit and to authorize the City Manager to enter into an LPA agreement with ODOT to allow ODOT to resurface a City portion of State Route 128, ODOT Project HAM slash BUT, State Route 128, 10.75 slash 0.00-PID 102544. Your motion? Mr. Mayor. Vice Mayor Pullman. I'll make a motion that the resolution be adopted. Second. Vice Mayor Pullman, second by Council Member Lauer. Discussion on this resolution? Hearing none, roll call vote please. Moeller? Yes. Pullman? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Fear? Yes. Vaughn? Yes. NAB? Yes. Flower? Yes. Resolution adopted, 7 0. Return agenda item number 14. It's also a resolution involving a mutual aid agreement. A resolution authorizing a mutual aid agreement with the South with Southwest Ohio Public Health Agencies relative to reciprocal emergency management assistance or aid during an emergency or other event which may require additional public health services in directing the city manager to execute any and all documents necessary to accept said agreement. Mr. Mayor. Councilmember Vaughn. I move the resolution be adopted. Second. Motion by Councilmember Vaughn. Second by Councilmember Ryan. Discussion or comments, questions on this one? Hearing none, roll call vote. Moeller. Yes. Pullman. Yes. Ryan. Yes. Fear. Yes. Vaughn. Yes. Nab. Yes. Lauer. Yes. Resolution adopted, 7 0. Go to agenda item number 15. There's a resolution uh, involving some grant funds, Children with Medical Handicaps Program. A resolution authorizing and directing the city manager to execute an agreement between the City of Hamilton, Ohio, and the Ohio Department of, of Health Bureau of Child and Family Health relative to receiving grant funding for participation in the Children with uh, Medical Handicaps Program and authorizing all actions relative to said grant funds. All actions to receive said grant funds. Mr. Mr. Mayor. Vice Mayor Pullman. Make a motion that the resolution be adopted. Second. Mr. Vice Mayor Pullman, would you make that second, Mr. Yes, sir. Seconded by Council Member Ryan. Questions on this particular resolution? Hearing none, roll call vote. Moeller? Yes. Pullman? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Fear? Yes. 
Vaughn. Yes. Nab. Yes. Lauer. Yes. A solution adopted. 7 0. Okay, we go to agenda item number 19, which is a dual motion, it looks like. 16 talks about a resolution accepting the fact finding report and um, or rejecting the fact finding report. That's correct. That so, correct council has the up? option of doing correct. either one. Right. Uh, so, if I could maybe get some direction from council on how to proceed with the reading, I would uh, appreciate that. Uh, council wish to go with the first one, at least to read the first one and see what the vote is on the first one that you have 16A, I guess. Mr. Mayor, I could just make a resolution. Or not a resolution. I can make a motion. <laughs> I'd like to make a motion that we accept the, accept the fact finding report relating to the issues and or contract provisions for the members of the International Union of Operating Engineers, Local 20. Second. Second that motion. Okay, first off, it's a resolution. So is there a resolution? That's what we're, there's been a motion in the second, so I guess we vote on the one that's been read into the record. I have not read it right yet. I'm asking for counsel to tell me to pick which one to read. Is which one to read. That's so this is a motion to pick which one to read. Okay. Read the first I think, one take a vote. In that, I, I think he just made a motion, motion, uh, motion just that, um, that resolution be adopted so we can, you know, read the entire okay. motion into the record. But I think we have a, a, a first and a second. Right. There's been a first and a second, right. That's all that we've done so far. So is there a roll call vote? Did he read the first one? We, we can, for the record, we can just read that in, into the record. Okay. But then we, we can go into the vote right immediately after that. Great. Yeah, that, that's, yeah. Just do it that way. Okay. okay. A resolution accepting the fact-finding report relating to certain issues and or contract provisions for members of the International Union of Operating Engineers, IUOE Local 20 State Employment Relations Board case number 2023-MED-04-0372. Mr. Mayor. Vice Mayor Pullman. Now I'll make a motion that the resolution be adopted. We already have a motion on the floor, so, so I think it's just if there any discussion right under, the, under the motion okay. and then to go to the vote. Any discussion about this resolution and the motion that the resolution be adopted? That. Okay. Ryan and Nat, right? Got it. Motion made by Council Member Ryan, seconded by Council Member Knapp. So that's okay. And any discussion right now about the resolution accepting <coughs> the fact finding report? Any comment or discussion about that prior to the roll call vote? Nothing at all. Okay. Roll call vote. Moeller? Yes. Holman? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Beer? Yes. Vaughn? Yes. Nab? Yes. Lauer? Yes. Resolution adopted. 7 0. Okay. Audience of the city manager. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, just uh, maybe we put in an exclamation point on some of the Tom Vanderhorst comments at the beginning of the meeting. But uh, I was sitting here thinking throughout the meeting that the ironic thing about getting older is you soon realize that you know less and less, you just don't recognize it until you get older and you figure out that you just aren't nearly as smart as you thought you were as a, as a 20 or 30 year old. But um, and the reason I say that, uh, when we went to the executive director system here probably seven, eight years ago, whenever we actually launched that, honestly, that was a, in my mind, that was a way to organize around um, a lot of my weaknesses and putting people that had uh, very specific strengths and roles that could uh, manage large groups. Um, and this sort of period that's ending with Tom's departure, and I know that uh, Director Scamese is leaving at some point this year, uh, it's just, it's sort of sad because I mean there was a stretch that this group has come together and and the credit going to the executive directors and their ability to organize their uh, departments that report through them but to get some pretty incredible results um, but Tom in particular when you think back and I know we talked about the Hamilton Parks Conservancy uh, we talked about Spooky Nook um, and I realize council probably appreciates the volume of paperwork that hit your desk in terms of all the agreements and resolutions and ordinances and attachments. Uh, Tom was the, always the one person on staff that read every single word, would work with the attorneys on um, ideas and thoughts. And for someone that came up mostly through finance, was able to maintain a very creative way of viewing things. 
Um, not that financial people can't, but uh, but sometimes that's not a strength of theirs. <laughs> but uh, poor David. <laughs> Ouch. Actually, I was I was thinking I was picturing David in my mind. I was making that comment, but um, but I mean you you cannot say enough about what. Tom has brought to the community, and it, I mean, I'm, it's just sad um, that next week, uh, next Wednesday is his last day with us, but, um, but thank you, Tom. I mean, what you have contributed to Hamilton has been superlative. Thank you. I do have six cupcakes if you like one, but um, yeah. that's all I have. Thank you. Audience, City Council, Mr. Mayor, House Member Ryan. Um, <clears throat> happy to announce that the uh, school board and superintendent are uh, allowing me to get the students involved with the letter writing campaign to get Amtrak in town. Great uh, idea. Mr. Mayor, and I think um, Councilman Nab, you recall, we, we, we talked to a couple students. St. Anne's at, Church, St. Anne's School. Yep. Yeah. Um, so we're going to be sending uh, our students, um, they're going to be sending uh, letters to the governor, to the Speaker of the House, and the President of the Senate, informing them of how important it is to get Amtrak in Hamilton, Ohio. And um, to me, this is such a, a special time because uh, it's council and our school district coming together for a common goal, to raise Hamilton up. And the best part of this, we're getting our students involved, our young people, getting them involved with, with current events in Hamilton, but I, I think the biggest portion of this is they are fighting for their future. And I think that's, that's really special and, uh, and, and very important. So um, thank you to the school board and um, Superintendent uh, Holbrook for uh, uh, allowing me to uh, do this with, with the kids and the students. So uh, hopefully here in a couple weeks, they're gonna let me know how many letters we're sending to Columbus. And I, I can't wait to, to hear from uh, some of this find staff members up there in Columbus with the thousands of letters that are be uh, hitting the offices of our uh, state leadership. So I'll keep you updated. That's great. That's great to hear. Anyone else on council? I just want to say two things. One is lately Becky Abbott passed away this week. And if you didn't know her, she was the VFW auxiliary, but she started something called Reese Across America locally. Mm -hmm. And it's a it's a nationwide, but she opened it regionally at Greenwood Cemetery, where wreaths are put on the graves of, uh, of veterans who have passed away. But uh, she was just an incredible woman, an incredible leader, and uh, those of us who had a chance to meet her know that she was really a really special person. And I got a Joshua Tom, the ELT, filled so many problems and they hit so many home runs. I mean, you've had a great team here, and. Many of them are out there right now. And Dave, I'm going to include you on that, too. Okay. Well, and, uh, let's not get crazy tonight, but... Uh, <laughs> okay. Anyone else on council? Anything else you want to say? No. Okay. Executive session, Mr. City Manager? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, for two different items. The first is to consider the appointment, employment, promotion, or compensation of a public employee. And the second is to consider the purchase of property for public purposes. Okay. Is there a motion that go? I don't need to do that up to the development one, do I, this time? Because I know that it was said. Okay. Is there a motion that council go in executive session for those stated purposes given by the city manager? So moved. Second. Motion by council member Nab. Second by vice mayor Pullman. Roll call vote, please. Moeller? Yes. Pullman? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Fear? Yes. Vaughn? Yes. Nab? Yes. Lauer? Yes. Motion adopted, 7-0. Seven <coughs> okay, 7-40, uh, that takes care of the business in the regular meeting. We'll come out of the executive session just to close the regular meeting. Thank you.